In chapter 4, 1 Timothy, Paul talking to Timothy, he said, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that means plainly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisies, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them that believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. But up there in verse 2 it says, Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. And I thought about that as a, uh, if you'd look at it, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, and that means past feeling when you when you don't feel the power of God and the Word of God don't penetrate your heart anymore. And I, and I thought about in John chapter eight when the Word of God showed up. Hey Amen. They brought that adulterous woman. I know everybody preaches about the adulterous woman, and and it, maybe the story was all about her. And I, uh, something stood out to me last night. I began to read that when they brought the scribes and the Pharisees brought this woman that was taken in adultery in the very act. The Bible said, they said, Moses commanded us that such should be stoned, but what sayest thou, tempting him? And Jesus stooped down with his finger and began to write on the ground as though he heard him not, Brent. And, hey man, the Bible said as they continued asking, he rose up and he said, he that's among you without sin, let him cast out of the first stone. And he stooped down again and began to write. And the Bible said, they being convicted by their own conscience. I thought about that. Even the scribes and Pharisees, amen, their uh, conviction set up in their heart. Even they, amen, the Bible said that they have been convicted by their own conscience. You know, God didn't send His Son to condemn us. Amen. We was, uh, if we got what we deserve, the condemnation, He hung on the tree for that condemnation, that sin debt that you and I owed. Amen. He didn't come to condemn us. But listen, there's a difference between condemnation and conviction. Amen. I'm glad that my heart is not seared, brother. I, I'm glad that I can still feel the power of God. I can still take the Word of God and take it and apply it to my life. Hey Amen. There's three places that I can think of right off the top of my head that the finger of God shows up. Exodus chapter 31. Moses went up into the mount and he brought down the tablets that was wrote with the finger of God. Hey Amen. And in Daniel 5 5, Belshazzar was having a drunken party and he saw something over on the wall against the candlestick. A man's hand that was writing. Hey Amen. On the plaster. And the Bible said his loins was loose and his knees spoke together. Even Belshazzar, a drunkard, his conscience wasn't seared with that hard iron. The Word of God still yet penetrated. In John chapter 8, they heard and they saw whatever he wrote. There's been many speculations of what he wrote, but every time I can see the finger of God, amen, it's the Word of God. We need the Word of God. Amen, when you get past feeling, when the conscience does not convict you of your sin. Amen. But listen, Hebrews chapter 4, he said, if you be with chastisement, and God deals with you. Amen. Listen, when you feel that conviction, it's the Word of God and the power of God. Brother, the Holy Ghost and Isaiah chapter 10, it says it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. Amen. Listen, I thought about the voice of God. How does it get his voice out. He takes an old foolish preacher that'll stand. It ain't my word. It ain't the preacher down the word. Down the road, his word. It's God's word this morning. And so when you're saying no to the word of God, you're saying no to the spirit of God. Amen. And the more you put it off and you say there's nothing to it. Amen. I believe that's when your heart begins to get callous and you get where you can't hear that still small voice speaking to your heart. Amen. You remember when Adam 
when he was in the garden. The Bible said they had taken of that tree and they eaten and their eyes was open. They sold fig leaves together. I'm glad, brother, after I sinned. Hey, I still hear the voice of God. The Bible said, and they heard the voice of God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid in the trees, brethren. And brother, listen, the Lord said, where art thou, Adam? You think God didn't already know where Adam was? Amen. He already knows where you're at today. Amen. I've given this illustration here before. You go to these hospitals and these doctor's offices. They've got these maps up all over the place. Amen. Listen, and them maps wouldn't do a bit of good. But there's one special thing on that map. There's a little red dot that said right there, that's where you're at. Amen. If that red dot wasn't there, it wouldn't do you a bit of good. But listen, the Word of God, it shows men and women where they're at and where they're going. God already knows where they're at. But it was Adam that needed to realize he wasn't a tree. He couldn't hide in the tree. He wasn't blended in. Amen. Listen, I'm glad the voice of God, Psalm 29 said the voice of the Lord is upon the water. The voice of the Lord is full of power. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord is it breaketh the cedars of Lebanon. Hey, the voice of the Lord, it divides the flame of fire. The voice of the Lord maketh the hind the clay. Hey, Amen. The voice of God is still going out today. Hey, Amen. Hebrews 24 and 12 said the word of God is quick and it's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Hey, Amen. Dividing to the soul and the spirit and the joint and tomorrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intent of our heart. Hey, they might be somebody thinking that they're bad. They've done that unpardonable sin. And listen, and that conscience and that voice is still speaking to you. Hey, man, listen. God deals with you. Hey, He knows where you're at. But where are you at today, friend? Hey, man, that chapter to Peter was a preaching. He said, Let all the house of Israel know surely that that same Jesus whom you crucified, you and I today, we helped drive the nails in his hand. He said, Whom you crucified, God hath made both Lord and Christ. What did the Word of God do? The Bible said it pricked them in their heart. Hey, Amen. Listen. And they said, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter said repent. Hey man, I believe repentance. A lot of churches ain't preaching repentance today. A lot of churches, they want you to just come and give your money and give your tithe. They don't want to change life. They just want your money and your tithes and your offering. But God wants to change life in you today. Hey man, listen, the Bible said, they said what shall we do? Peter said repent. And repent means turn. When God shows up and he deals with you when your conviction, when your conscience convicts you, hey man, it's up to you to move. Turn, brother. Hey man, he said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. He said, for this promise is given unto you and to your children and to many of the far off, as the Lord your God shall call. I believe He's calling people today. I believe the voice of the Lord is speaking to men and women's hearts. And He's saying, come, Jesse. Come. Hey, He don't want your house. He don't want your money, your bank account. God wants you today. You want to change life? I'm telling you, you've got to get in touch with God. I believe His voice is speaking to you. And the Bible said, they that gladly received His word were baptized. And there was added unto them about 3,000 thousand souls that day and they continued steadfastly. Amen. This is a race of endurance. This ain't no 50 yard dash. We go a little bit and quit. But we keep on pressing on. Hey Amen. I don't know what today's going to bring, Jason. I don't know what tomorrow's going to hold. But praise God, I know who holds tomorrow. Press on. The Bible said in the Lord 
added to the church today. I can sit here and preach all day. If the Spirit of God ain't in it, boy, it ain't no good. But when the Spirit of God begins to destroy that yoke that's holding you, amen, I'm telling you, it'll make a different life. It'll change you from the inside out. That's what it takes today. I'm afraid there's a lot of churches... Amen. The Bible said in Matthew 24, it said, Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall ask code. Genesis chapter 6, and why did the Bible say that my spirit shall not always strive with man? Because the Bible said man's heart was evil continually. That's when he destroyed the world with water, save Noah, the eighth person, the preacher of righteousness. Amen. The Word of God's going to go out. A lot of people ain't got an ear to hear the Word of God. And they've Hold it off her shoulder. She said, I'm young. i got plenty of time. But I'm telling you, there's an 18-year-old boy who died over the house just the other day. Hey, man, we're leaving here, people. There's a line set out there. It's an appointment. We're going to meet. Why? Why would you tell God that you're not real? And you're, hey, man, the Bible said there, and I read it in Timothy 4, perilous times will come in Timothy 3, 2 Timothy. But he said, it's the Spirit speaketh expressly that some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to the seducing spirit. That's what it is, the devil telling you you got plenty of time today. But I promise we could leave here that fast. And more would you be. I love you this morning. I pray the Spirit of God would deal with your heart. Conviction was set up. We call it old time conviction. When you can't rest, your food don't taste good, Jason. And amen. You gotta have you gotta have a change. And you've heard about the Spirit of God. And you still feel that power of God drawing you out of the field of sin. I love you this morning. May God bless you.